Like there's so many things in life I just can't even play with because I would probably get addicted and Hermes has turned out to be one of those things, okay? Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Olivia and here we talk all things luxury and lifestyle and we're doing a bit of a different video today. Um, it's a video that I love to watch personally. It's not a haul, it's not a review. It's a sit down video and we are talking all things buying a Birkin or Kelly in Paris at the Hermes Boutique. Uh, I can't wait to share my experience. I have a lot to say. I am very excited about sharing this story. So if you are interested in Hermes, in Birkins, in Kelly's, in quota bags, in the Paris experience, all of that, please keep watching. This is absolutely the video for you. All right. so. I recently took a trip to Paris. It was the best. I had an amazing time and so much of my time was spent trying to figure out how to get a Birkin or Kelly. And to be clear, I am like a bit of a studious person. I, I don't even know if it's so much that I'm studious versus that I have an addictive personality. So like there's so many things in life I just can't even play with because I would probably get addicted and Hermes has turned out to be one of those things, okay? So I had been, oh my gosh, for at least like six to 10 months before going on this trip, I had been scouring the internet for tips and tricks for videos exactly like this one, which is why I knew I had to film one, to figure out how to get a Birkin or a Kelly at the Hermes Boutique in Paris. And it is so not straightforward. It is absolutely not, you know, you just waltz in and get a bag. And before I get into the story, I will just say that I had full understanding of this going to Paris, right? Again, I had research. I understood that it was going to be a process that, um, you know, I was really going to have to have the chutzpah, as they say, okay, to go through this process. And I did, and I have a story to tell. So without further ado, I'll share like how you do it, generally speaking, and then I'll share my personal experience. So. How you do it is that you apply for a leather goods appointment on like the special Hermes site. I'll uh, in introduce, I'll enter the link here. Um, you apply for an appointment, a leather goods appointment, through a lottery system on the website that you see on the screen now. And essentially, you have a couple different options. You can choose, if you don't know, there are three stores, three Hermes stores in Paris. So once you're on the website, you can choose if you want to apply for an appointment at all three stores or if you want to target a specific store. Going into this experience, I had no clue which store I would like the most, which I would feel the best vibe at. Um, so I thought that I would go for Fabor, which is the flagship store, as opposed to one of the neighborhood stores, um, Sèvres or Georges Sank. So anyway, say it all to say, you have the opportunity to choose if you want to do just one store or if you want to do all three. Um, obviously, it's up to you how you strategize um, in looking through things like purse blog and YouTube. Some people tend to target the neighborhood stores versus the flagship store, um, knowing that just the shopping experience will be quite different, that they might have uh, more time with an essay or they might kind of get on better. It might be a more personal experience, personable excuse me, experience at one of the neighborhood stores. Um, and others target FSH for probably the obvious reason, which is it is the flagship. It's going to have the highest quantity. You may potentially, if this is your thought pattern, have a higher probability of getting a bag there just by a facet of there being more bags there, if that makes sense. Um, so there's a lot of different schools of thought, but you go to this website, you choose if you want to apply for all three or one. You can't apply for two, so it's a choice of all stores or isolating it to one store. And you have to do it the day before. So at, I believe, 10 a.m. every morning, Paris time, uh, the appointment system opens. You have to put in all of your passport information, your name, so on and so forth, um, and you apply for an appointment for the following day. So fun fact, very, very fun and flirty fact, the booking system is off on Sundays. So you cannot apply on Sunday. You obviously would apply on Saturday for a Monday appointment. Um, but you go into the system, you apply the day prior to for an appointment the next day after selecting which store you want to apply to, and then you wait, okay? And you wait like chomping at your nail beds, you wait like scratching your eyeballs out in like a fever dream, having hot sweats all over Paris, just like hoping and praying that you are one of the chosen children who gets invited to an appointment. 
okay? It is the most, oh my God, mind bending experience when you're like, wait, sorry, I have to beg to spend thousands of dollars that I have saved and sacrificed other purchases, other things like trips and very, very fancy dinners for. I've saved so much to come and deliver this money to you on a silver platter in exchange for a bag and I don't even know if I will get one, okay? So it is grueling, okay? Also like talk about the extreme compartmentalization, like you're just bibbing and bobbing around Paris trying to pretend that you're not actually about to have like an aorta, like a vein is going to burst in my neck as I am like anxiously waiting to know if I have an appointment or not. Um, okay, so this is getting into the personal experience bit, but like, let me hold my drama for later. Um, you wait, okay? The whole point of that extremely long monologue was the fact that you wait. You wait and see if you have an appointment, um, which might I add, makes it quite tricky to be on vacation, right? Because as much as I am a shopper, I love shopping, and I kid you not, I spent at least 50% of my time in the city, which I was there for a week. Um, I spent at least 50% of that time shopping. And I'm proud to say it. I don't even know why I'm grimacing. Like, I'm proud. I'm like, you better, you better, girl. You better do it, girl, because you, your heart led you. Okay? Your heart led you right to her mess. <laughs> that is where all good things happen. All right? Uh, so say it all to say, you spend a lot of time um, living in this zone of like, well, do I plan to go see the site? Do I plan to take the train somewhere? Right? Like, do I go, which I did, go to Champagne for the day? Um, but I was only able to go after finding out that I didn't have the appointment, which is like a sad thing to admit. And I swear, if we are close friends, travel with me, I'm fun. Um, it won't just be shopping and actually that's a lie. That was a lie. It will just be shopping and champagne, but like come with me anyway. So you spend a lot of time patiently or anxiously or monotonously waiting to see if you have the appointment, which can 100% interfere with just seeing the city and enjoying everything that Paris has to offer, which is so much more than shopping, so much more. So you wait and you wait and you wait, uh, again, just for a leather goods appointment. So I actually didn't end up getting a leather goods appointment ever. Um, I started applying the day before I got to the city and I even considered changing my flight back if I did get an appointment. So I ended up applying, I believe eight times. Um, eight times, eight chances, no leather goods appointment. So obviously I'm completely bummed. But again, from just extensive research, I had heard other people have a ton of success going to a store and kind of just hanging around to see if anyone canceled an appointment, which believe it or not, I'm sure some people are like, how could you ever cancel an Hermes appointment? But like Hermes is Hermes and life is life. So there are instances, of course, where people do cancel an appointment after getting one. Um, and then so obviously one that becomes available. So I heard that if you go to the store around 11 a.m. or 3 p.m., you can inquire as to whether or not any cancellations have come in, um, or you might just simply get lucky and have someone say, like, yeah, actually, we can take you. Um, I tried that route as well many, many, many times, and it didn't work either. Um, I'll link above my last video, which is a Hermes Paris haul, uh, which explains what I was doing at Hermes all of those days, what I was getting, what I was buying, all of that. Um, and I'm happy with my purchases. I really am. I love absolutely everything, but I didn't end up getting a bag and I was deeply disappointed. And again, I knew going into it that there was no guarantee, but you know when you just feel positive about something? Like I think generally speaking, I'm a quite positive person. Um, I believe in the power of manifestation. I think that the things that I put out into the universe will come back to me. So my degree of confidence couldn't have been higher, okay? I did not think there was a chance I wasn't gonna get an appointment. I thought there was a chance that at the appointment I might not get offered the bag that I wanted. Which I'm actually realizing I should explain that bit of the process, okay? So say you get an appointment, you are approved via the lottery system and you have an appointment at, uh, let's say, Georges Sank, uh, the following day at noon sharp. You have to be there on time, okay? Hermes, as we all know, is all about like exclusivity, kind of knowing the right people, what have you. And so the feeling around these, these appointments is like very, um, it's, it's like precision shopping, I feel. Like you get there at the right time, you know exactly what you want, what have you. 
Um, or you're probably leaving like heartbroken, penniless, and you know, toothless even if things go that bad. So you get to Georges Sank, you're sitting, you know, off somewhere in the cut, um, and your essay says, you know, what can I help you with? And you say, I am interested in a Birkin. I'm open to sizes 35 or 30, not 25 or 40. I'm looking for a neutral palette, so I'm open to, um, you know, maybe a taupe, a tan, noir, gold, cray, uh, nata, and chai. And I'm looking for specifically Epsom leather or Togo leather. You know, I don't want Swift, which is their kind of soft leather. Um, boom, right? Like, okay. So you give your desired specifications to your essay and then they either come back with a bag or they do not. Um, there's a lot of chatter on the internet around folks believing that you might be a reseller and maybe that's why they don't offer you a bag. Um, them simply obviously not having any of those specific specs. So maybe they do have um, a Cray Birkin, but it's in a 25. Or maybe they have a black uh, Birkin 35, but it is a Birkin touch and you don't want any exotics on your bag. So many, many reasons go into why you may not be offered a bag or why you may not see anything come out from the back. Um, but it's intense, right? You have to go in with a plan and not to mention the price of Hermes can swing so greatly based on those specific uh, specifications. So if you want, for example, a Birkin touch, which has a kind of um, exotic handle and back flap, it might cost you, you know, another eight, nine thousand dollars than just getting that bag without the exotics on it. Um, so you have to know what you want. You have to be open to the price point. You have to be open to what's in stock, what have you. Um, and you're only offered one bag at a time. So they, I think it's it's happened, right? Like I'm sure you can find a story on the internet where someone's like, oh, actually they offered me two at once. It is rare. The majority of individuals have had an experience where they're offered one bag, and then of course you obviously can say yes or no. You don't have to buy it just because they bring it out, of course. Um, you can say yes or no, and then that might be it, right? That might be full stop, clean break, you're leaving toothless and sad, okay? Or they can say, you know what, let me, let me go in the back one more time and check again. And so they might come back instead of with a Birkin Touch in black, they might come back with a classic Birkin, size 30, Togo leather, in you know a color that isn't one of the ones you specified but is also a neutral um, that they're selling that season so the process is quite intense right it is a lot of lead up for potentially a major letdown which is for sure what i experienced um, but believe it or not i feel positively about the experience because paris is a place that i try to go as often as i can i'll be going essentially every year um, for the foreseeable future and so I feel like I know a little bit more about what to expect I've built a purchase history. Of course, I did a major haul when I was in Paris So hopefully I am a familiar name in the system now I don't know if any of that stuff matters, but I don't know. It just makes me feel better It makes me feel like um, I know what I'm getting myself into in the future I am definitely putting aside money again this year for hopefully a Birkin potentially a Kelly um, but I like that there's a little bit of mystery in the whole thing. So I know this probably is like a weird thing to say, right? Because I didn't get the bag. I, I saved for the bag. I studied about how to get one and you know how to increase your odds and what to say and where to go and all of these things. Again, like I said, for at least six to eight months and I didn't get one. So you would think that I would be quite disappointed, which again, I was and I am a little bit still, but more than anything else, I just, really enjoyed the journey. That sounds so, ew, I'm like gonna puke myself. I'm grossing myself out, I'm giving myself the ick, but I mean it. Like, I really enjoyed the journey. It was fun. It's fun to not know, right? Like in a world where you can yelp every dish before you order it at a restaurant, it can just be nice to not know what's gonna come of something and just go along for the ride, right? So that is very much so what I did. Um, again, I had a really good experience. My essay at Sev, like I said multiple times, was the best. Um, the others were totally, you know, nice and kind and we got along just fine, but she was just such a cool person, such a big help. Um, the stores, again, themselves are stunning. Like, just to just be in that space in Paris to see, like, the original uh, moldings on the walls and the wood was just so cool. Uh, they, of course, have bags on display like you would never believe. So you get to see things that you might not see, just, you know, being carried down the street. So 
The experience overall was amazing. I will 100% try again. I don't have any hard feelings, um, nothing nasty to say. I know there's some videos of people, you know, just feeling like they were absolutely dejected. And I was joking about leaving Penniless and Toothless, but like people were feeling Penniless and Toothless, okay? And I, <laughs> I hate that for them. And that is awful, like that sounds horrible but I don't have a shared experience. It was lovely, I will try again, and this time I will get one because your girl is determined. Um, and these prices are going up like eight to 9% every year, so there is a little bit of urgency, okay? I'm not trying to pay like $100 million in a year and a half to get one of these bags, uh, but I'm excited to try again. I will 100% come back with another video, and truly, I learned a lot along the way. So if you have questions, about the system itself, about the stores, or just like how to not look like a reseller, which seems to be a major concern of Hermes essays in this day and age. Um, let me know, leave comments, uh, slide in my DMs on Instagram, and I will absolutely engage, answer the questions, and try to help because I want us all to get these bags, right? Like for so many of us, these are just things that we cannot wait to do that are absolutely on our bucket list and I wanna be of help to you. So if you've got any questions that I can answer, please, please let me know. Um, as always, thanks for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for many more videos, all things luxury and lifestyle. See ya.